Hi, I'm David Edwards from Sony Europe, and we're here today because we have an exciting new announcement from the Digital Imaging Group. Today is the announcement of the Alpha 9 Mark II. And to help talk us through the new product, I'm here with Pierrick Masson, Alpha Hello, Product Manager for Sony Europe. That's correct. Pierrick. Yes. Alpha 9 Mark II, it's in your yes. hands. Brand new camera. Tell us about it. So, Behind the Alpha 9 and the Alpha 9 series, and before talking about the Alpha 9 Mark II, uh, just wanted to, to make a point about what was the identity of the Alpha 9 series and what we're trying to achieve here. Um, as you know, many professional photographers, um, videographers um, have different needs. With the Alpha 9 series, we're trying to achieve speed. That's kind of like the core value around the camera. And with the Alpha 9 Mark II, obviously, we're improving these things. Uh, but speed um, is kind of like at the highest levels. And uh, obviously, we're targeting with this new Alpha 9 Mark II, um, photojournalists and sports photographers, because they have very specific requirements, um, they have very, very specific workflow. Um, they need to deliver images really quickly to their media centers because they are witnessing like some important events. So the most important thing um, is like to have like the perfect picture and to transfer it as fast as possible to the public eye. What are the differences then between Alpha 9 and Alpha 9 Mark II? How is it quicker? How is it a better so fit the, for the workflow? So just top line, the Alpha 9 Mark II, the main improvements um, are on, on key three things. So the first thing is about the body. As you can witness here, the body is different from the Alpha 9. It's actually like very close to the Alpha 7 R Mark IV, and the improvements rely mostly around like the durability, um, because obviously uh, sports shooters, uh, photojournalists, um, they have shooting conditions that are very uh, kind of like uh, very tough for the cameras. Um, yeah. So we need like a tougher body, especially uh, around the ceiling. Um, the weather ceiling has, has been improved. We new ceiling uh, screws like around the camera. The battery uh, chamber has changed. Um, the memory card chamber has changed. Um, you've got the button changes like that exposure compensation dial where you have a lock now. That little button that lets you like, switch from, um, uh, for example, uh, manual focus to um, AFS or AFC. Now you can like, still have like, your eye on the EVF like sports photographer would do and change from um, um, single focus to uh, continuous focus. So those big changes are quite enormous. The second thing is about the connectivity. As you know, uh, last March we launched the version 5 or Alpha 9. And that also included like some new, um, for example, FTP transfer. It was already in the version four. Uh, but all these kind of like professional requirements of transferring in specific conditions um, images, um, we tried to focus on that as well. Because um, although the Alpha 9 is already good at doing this, uh, it was not fast enough. So for example, we increased the speed. So it used to be capped at 100 megabytes. Now we are one gigabyte. So it's like 10 times faster from the Alpha 9. So Alpha 9 was already good, but it was maybe like on, on the boundary of uh, limits uh, of the goodness. New USB-C, that's a faster, um, faster transfer, but also you can do remote shooting now with, you, with uh, your USB-C. I think the remote shooting is very important because most people don't realize that a lot of cameras are set like on, on the side of like a, a sport field and are shot remotely because they are not allowed to be inside the field and et cetera, and they want incredible shots. So we need to improve like the experience, the operations you can do with this. So for example, now um, you can control from your PC um, um, your camera uh, remotely, but you can do different things. Like you can format your card. Let's say you have like the first half like of a football game. You've done that, you've got your images. You want to format it because you don't want like 10,000 images like for uh, one single game. So now you can format it, you can switch servers if you're sending to different media agencies. Point is about connectivity. That's a big, big, big improvement because you have new features that are essential in the workflow of professional photographers. You have, for example, the voice tagging. Voice tagging was requested by most sports photographers. And that's quite a big change. So what a sports photographer would do is like, I get the shots, I voice tag um, to, to, to give the information to the media center and then you can quickly like have this information out and this image out in the public eye. And that's very central for this type of shooting. Transfer and tagging, which is a new feature we introduce um, um, in the Alpha 9. And now with the Alpha 7 R Mark IV is also like available in there. We've got new features coming on um, for this. With Alpha uh, 9 Mark II. With Alpha 9 Mark II. Um, so that's a really great, great um, uh, news. But what was uh, regrettable is obviously it was only available in three countries, uh, UK, France and Germany. And now I'm pleased today that, uh, to announce that um, these features will be um, uh, available across all of Europe on, in most countries where all pro photographers can uh, benefit from this fantastic feature of uh, transfer and tagging and, and benefit from this fantastic workflow. So 
that's also good news for today. And finally, um, I, I would say like the speed of the camera, obviously this is an Alpha 9 series. So we always improve the speed and the new processor by index is like quite like a big thing. Um, and then the main thing is obviously the mechanical shutter we improved um, the, from five FPS. I used to use, I uh, used to shoot only in mechanical shooter at five FPS, which was a little bit frustrating for some sp sports shooters because you can't always use a 20 FPS uh, electronic shutter. Some um, uh, lightning conditions prevent you from shooting electronic shutter. So we doubled that to 10 FPS in the Alpha 9 Mark II, which is a huge improvement. Mm -hmm. You have the EVF latency that is better. We improved that with the new processor, uh, Bion, uh, the new Bionzex. Uh, we improved the EF tracking. We've got real-time tracking and our engineers managed to improve it even further. So okay. you should see a difference in tracking like subjects, which is really important for sports photographers, obviously. From what you're saying so far, yes. the changes sound quite subtle. Is that a fair statement to make? I don't think that's a fair statement. See, um, if you look like from a more like enthusiast point of view, um, yeah. you have like workflow that is kind of like, um, let's say like you have less requirements. But sports photographers um, and, and sports agencies like are requiring like very, very uh, definite type of um, um, new features. Um, I was just mentioning like, for example, voice tagging. That's an essential. Maybe most enthusiasts won't um, find it useful, but all sports photographers are using it. Uh, there are more than 43 improvements in this camera compared to the Alpha 9 Mark I. And that shows like it's a big leap forward uh, for this type of photographers in terms of experience of shooting, in terms of experience of like sharing their images, in terms of also kind of like operation they can do like remote shooting and etc. So it's a big leap forward um, with this camera. Okay, so you've mentioned things that we've been asked for. Is that the reason for Alpha 9 Mark II? The changes that have been made from the Mark I model? Yes, exactly. Um, so as you know, like since the Alpha 9 Mark I, we are really kind of like trying to target and, and bring the best experience possible to professionals. Uh, but that only works if you listen to feedback. And uh, based on this feedback of Alpha 9 current users, sports photographers, um, listening to how their workflow works, um, how they need to deliver their images to their uh, media centers, to their partners, to their agencies. Um, it was essential for us like, to develop this camera, um, to develop like, um, an experience that matches um, those kind of like uh, shooting requirements. So that's why we, we, we launched this camera. Do you think this is all professional photographers should be running to this? Is this everyone, all existing Alpha 9 users should yeah. be upgrading to Alpha 9 Mark II? I don't think, I don't think that's the case. It's very much like the core kind of like audience we are trying to address um, with this camera. But obviously um, with the new improvements, a lot of uh, photographers will find it's very useful. Let's say like you have the new remote shooting um, um, features in this camera uh, with the remote camera tool. Uh, maybe some wildlife photographers um, that are shooting in very specific conditions where they need to, like, to be really away from the camera and shoot animals that are very shy, that are not really used like, to the human contacts. Um, so for example, the new remote camera um, control features will help them. But we definitely think that there's still a huge audience for the Alpha 9 Mark I because as we've seen and we're not particularly anticipated, a lot of wedding photographers, for example, are using the Alpha 9 Mark I and it's still a very capable camera. And we definitely think that um, the right way to do it is like to still sell the Alpha 9 Mark I to um, address these audiences that may not want um, the extra features from the Alpha 9 Mark II, but may be very pleased with the experience shooting with the Alpha 9 Mark I. You've talked about photography. Yep. What about the videographic capabilities of the new Mark II? Uh, you have like now two new features that I think that are very crucial for this type of um, um, photographers that may be asked like to do some videography because more and more photojournalists they are asked like to do still pictures but also like to take some quick clips uh, for news website all these kind of things so they need to be able like to to have like a really quick system that delivers like great uh, great uh, quality in terms of video uh, great audio capabilities and also being able like to share it like very quickly the first feature is like obviously the real-time IOTO focus in movie. Uh, we introduced it with the A7R Mark IV that's unique to Sony. Uh, we definitely think this is the kind of like the technology of the future because um, autofocus in video is, uh, is better and better and better. And a lot of people are relying on that. And especially photojournalists that are which primer work and primer like kind of like skills are about photography. They may not know how to operate like manually and et cetera and make it um, um, very, um, um, very good. And the second thing is that it's, it's completely new technology um, that is unique to Sony as well, the new digital audio MI shoe. So as we introduced in the A7R IV, um, digital audio is basically uh, transforming the an analog signal um, uh, to digital signal 
um, and before uh, kind of like entering the camera. So within the mic? Yes, not within the camera. So let's say you're covering a state visit from an official, um, you're in a foreign country, so obviously you have a lot of the public around and etc. You have a lot of noise and your agency is asking you like, can we have like a quick question like we can plug in like in, on our website or for the news and they'll be like okay right i've got my small mic like is very lightweight uh, with my new uh, alpha 9 mark ii and then i can just shoot and completely isolate uh, my subject as if it was like in an interview room or like in a room with uh, not that many people and what it allows you to do is like obviously um, kind of like focus on the voice of the interviewee and deliver a better information, obviously, um, on, on the news. I guess the important question is then, yes. when can people start buying it? Uh, it's going to be available end of October. Um, this and year? It's this year. Um, so they're going to be able like, to try it um, and, and experience it and, and make their opinion about it and kind of like go in depth in the new features because we've got so many new features that are going to, like, going to be for them like a game changer in the way they work um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's going to be retail at 5,400 euros okay. and available everywhere in Europe. So thank you, Pierre-Eric, and thank you. thank you for watching. If you want full information about the new product, you can see it all on the Sony website now or head on over to Alpha Universe. And we really appreciate your feedback on the video in the comments below. Thanks very much.